All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Best Self Blueprint. So as you all know, the mission of this podcast is to bring on people with the knowledge, insights, and experiences as to what it takes to truly move that dial towards becoming the best version of yourself. So this next guest is a familiar face. It's someone who's been on here before. And his last time on here, he called his shot. His shot was that the next time he sat down with me, he would be signed to a football team. And that has stayed true. He is officially signed to Wyoming Mustangs. Uh, and so I am very excited to sit down and just pick his brain about the process and how it feels to officially come out the other side. So to reintroduce Yafe Harvey, what's up, man? Man, thanks for having me again. You know, it's a pleasure, man. Seriously, I appreciate you. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we, so I, I talk about this probably too often, like, but before we hopped on, it got like to the point where I had to just cut it off. And be like, all right, we need to start recording because <laughs> yeah, yeah. like we were getting into hey, the content. We could go and do it. It's not like, it's not like, hey, yo, all right, hold this, hold the good stuff. <laughs> yep. So I was like, all right, let's just click record and get into it. But like, I want to start off with what we were talking about two seconds before I click the record button, which is, it seems like right now, like, for example, you signing with the team for like what I was talking about, a couple of things in the works with best self and things really kicking off with that. It seems like right now is when a lot of people who really put their heads down and put in work over the last year or so are starting to get the, get the uh, like lucky breaks. So like you were about to go into that. So I want to hear what your thoughts are on that. No, I totally agree with you because it's funny. Like um, I've heard, you know, people are like, dude, I've saved money during the pandemic than I ever thought that I would say, or it'll be like, yeah, man, I've lost more weight than I thought I thought I was going to, you know, when the world was normal, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I think people, there was two ways that you, that you said, there's people chose to dial in, you know what I'm saying? Dial in and, and stay focused on the processes rather, rather if you wrote it down or if it was, if it was a constant thought in your head, for me, it was just a constant thought in my head because I was just like, look, when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to most definitely put my best foot forward. And if it doesn't go my way, it's not going to be due to lack of effort. It's going to be due to, okay, well, it just wasn't meant to be. You know what I'm saying? I, like I said, as long as I can go to sleep saying I did everything and then some, you know, I, I, can, I can fall asleep gracefully. Dude, and I think that's such a powerful thing because that's something I always talk about in terms of races where I'm like, I would rather have known that my training was perfect. I ran my perfect race and I just didn't place high rather than slacking off on my training, knowing that I didn't exactly run the best race I could have and maybe placing a little higher. Cause for me, it's about effort. And so right. I love what you're saying where at the end of the day, it really is that internal visceral feeling that only you're going to know whether or not you really put in the work that you believe you could have put in at an optimal level. Yeah. You know, to, to add on to that too, it's kind of like, you know, even holding yourself accountable, like I said, outside of writing it down or keep constantly thinking about it, you know, there's that, that little voice in your head that's like, hey, you can do more or someone else is out there or, hey, put an extra hour into work. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just that, that constant reminder, that constant little psyche, like, hey, you know, don't ever get comfortable. And that's the thing, like, um, you know, last time we talked up until this point, dude, it's been, it's been a grind, man. But, you know, again, I've been very fortunate in that place that's a train out of facility where you know i can see jj watt right who just signed with arizona i can see tj watt i can see Derek watt so you know i can see kevin zeiler and talk to them about like hey how's free agency go how does how does this go and just see on top of that the work ethic so just picking their brains too on top of that um you know my trainer hold me accountable too um you know people just around me you know my um you know close family members my aunt and uncle were like hey you know still rooting for you um keep doing it but really when it came down to it i was just doing the research man did the research hey what's the nearest tryouts you know what i'm saying and, and just you know put my best foot forward and like hey i've done all the work you know added in more yoga you know along the lines adding in more conditioning along the lines more footwork along the lines and and during that as well i'm also i was also coaching a seven on seven team too so you know, I was, while I was, while I was getting myself ready, I was educating other guys too. So that was, you know, something different, but still football related and had a, had a huge, huge opportunity. I decided to take that too. Yeah. And I do feel like there is something to be said about 
coaching others in any given sport or any given area makes you a better player at that game, whether it's yes. sports, whether it's business, whether it's relationships, whatever. I mean, obviously you need to know what you're talking about to be able to coach people, but I really think it adds the element of seeing from the coach's perspective, what makes a player great, what gives them that extra element. Um, but what, what I really want to talk about and why I really wanted to have you back on, especially once you sign this deal um, is I think there are a lot of people who are in the position where, like you just said, there was a long time. I mean, years for you where you were just straight up grinding. And mm -hmm. obviously yeah. like you can dive a lot more in depth into like what grinding is. Cause I feel like that term gets thrown around like crazy nowadays, but really you were like, you were working full-time plus coaching, training, doing all the extra accessory work, still maintaining a healthy like lifestyle with your relationships but now you get to see it from the side of you've got the contract, you've got that, that signature on there that obviously it's not the finish line, but that was the checkpoint you wanted to get to where now you can say, okay, like I know for a fact, this has paid off. So what's your advice for people who are still in that like grinding phase who haven't gotten the tangible results? They have that internal feeling that they're, they're doing the right things. They're putting in the work just like you did, but they haven't yet gotten to that checkpoint. What words of wisdom would you give those people? I would say some, uh, a phrase that a lot of people use, but I heard it first from Greg Put. you know, you have to keep throwing things at the wall until it eventually sticks. And meaning by that is that, you know, keep staying on task because it gets tiresome, dude. It gets really tiresome. You feel as though that nothing's getting accomplished. You feel as though that nothing is getting moved forward but really when it comes down to it it comes down one they like say keeping the people around you two making sure that you have the the people that's going to you know dot the i's and cross the t's and be like okay are you going to have that trainer that's going to push you right you know are you going to have um the buddies the positive you know you have um you know the positive friend group like you know remember recess back in the day Remember the show Recess? They were always together, like totally different people, but they are always together. Um, you know, have that fan base around you that's actually going to be in your corner, not, you know, hey, bro, you should give up on it. You know, your time's done, this, this, and that. But really, most of all, most of all, being mentally strong. You have to be mentally strong because I'll be honest with you. I was like, I, I told you at the last podcast, I was like, yeah, I got two more workouts. So I was like, you know what? And I guarantee that I'll sign with somebody within those two workouts just that belief as well too, you know, not, not saying it to say it, but you truly, truly believe it. You know, you truly vision that law of attraction that we talked about before. So you truly vision, okay. The color, the smell, the field, you know, you truly vision, okay. Within those drills that you're doing, okay. Catching the tennis ball, catching the football, the ladder, you know, every single thing that has a purpose behind what you're doing. So business perspective wise, okay. To look at you, you know, you know, you started out, all right, this is, you start out business cards where we had a conversation. Next thing you know, you're coming out with apparel. Like I said, I got to get that backpack, by the way. <laughs> you know, and you stay, you stay true to the task. You stay true to the course, you know, and as I told, told you before, as long as there's an unknown, you always have a shot. You know what I'm saying? Oh, heck yeah. I know what you're saying, but I, I want to dial in, uh, in terms of like, you, you need to have that supporting cast. That is yeah. critical. If you have people speaking the negativity into your ear, all that's doing is changing the internal channel to negativity. That's yes. all it's doing. And if just like, if you're watching a TV show that sucks, you got to change the channel to watch something better. Just right. like if all of that input is negative, you got to change that out. So that way you get the people in your life who are supporting you. Now, you don't just want yes men in your life who are going to oh, cheer you on, even if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You still want those people like a trainer, like a coach, like a mentor who are going to keep you accountable and make sure you're doing the right things. But there is a big difference between constructive criticism and negativity. Oh, yeah. No, constructive criticism. Is like, one thing I'll give my trainer, like his name's Jake Bodie. I, he's always he's always grinding me like, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, you can always get better and no, or he'll be like, Hey, it's not about the numbers. It's about the form. It's about the speed, you know, Hey, you know what, get this down, get that down, keep your hips low. You know, you're pushing out too high. Like just 
those constant little critiques that were as though, you know, in the moment you're like, yo, I hate this guy. I swear I do. Like, I really do. But then at the end of the day, you're like, hey, you know, he's looking out, he's doing what's best for me. You know what I mean? And then, and, and I see him three times a week, you know, and then I'll go over, you know, to another workout where I'm critiquing myself. You know, my thing was before I had to training camp was making sure I'm as flexible as limber as possible. Everybody's strong, right? Everybody's fast, but like the time Brady playing at 43, you know, his, his whole process is, you know, strength, that's just lengthening and being able to, um, you know, recover as quickly as possible. Um, so I implemented more, um, you know, yoga. I implemented more conditioning, um, you know, for that, that critiquing, you know, getting it from an external source is great, but internally it's just as important, if not more, because it's you versus you every single day, right? So, okay, how's your body feel this day? All right, if you're a little sore, you got to put a little extra effort into it. Work on the things that, you know, that doesn't necessarily, you know, um, recommend you to be strong. Two things that's recommend you to being, you know, technically sound, working on your stances, right? Or, okay, well, what you're going to do is, all right, now we're feeling 100% again. Now we can start moving that weight and moving it fast. Yeah, well, and I, I think also when we talk about internal, I want to go back to what you mentioned about like that mental fortitude as well. I think when you're, when you're feeling like you're immersed in the grind of it all and like just the hustle and bustle and always putting in the work and you're not yet reaping what you're sowing, there are two things to think about. And I say this first on all the freaking time. When you plant an apple tree, the last thing to grow is the apple. As the last thing, just like when you're hustling, when you're grinding, the last thing you're going to see is that finish line, is that checkpoint, right. is that achieved goal or achieved thing. And so you need to have that mental fortitude and understand that the process, you need to, you need to have fun with the process, but there are going to be times where it's not fun. Like we can all agree on that. Also, I love fit aid. I saw that, um, <laughs> but that, that seriously is such an important component. And so like, just to jump into this last weekend for the people who don't know who David Goggins is, I've shouted him out so many times on here before, but he set up a four by four by 48 challenge, which is you run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. And so I, so I did that this last weekend and on my third run, I started getting some like tightness and soreness in my right foot. Or so I thought it was just cramping. Turns out I had a minor sprain and I ran nine more runs after that because of the fact that, and I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm not saying I'm some special being, but I just had that mental callousing from all the training I've done before that makes it that much easier to do that. You can't expect to just jump into like these big things, like signing a contract with a team. If you haven't put the progressional steps in place to get there. So I think building gradually building that mental fortitude is such a key component. Oh yeah. And then like, there's, there's the quote that, you know, that Kobe Bryant said too, it's like, you know, don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're finished. You know, you don't, you know, you don't, everybody gets tired. Everybody gets, you know, everybody feels a little pain. Everybody, you know, uh, wants to tap out, but it's, it takes the, like I said, that little, the little bit of craziness to say, you know, I got to push the limits a little bit more because hell, hell, I, I've already started. Why would I stop right now? You know what I mean? You know, and then in the back of your mind, you got that, okay, what it could have, should have thing going on. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that's the thing that I told myself, like, yo, I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to, you know, go through the motions where as though that, okay, you know, well, I thought I did this, so I would have did that. No, it's just a matter of, look, you put in the training, you did all the work. I mean, yeah, over the past, you've helped me out. You know what I mean? You know, we, we go back that far, you know, where, you know, I told you, I'm like, hey, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, just believe in it and, you know, and have a little faith in it too, because when you, when you have faith and you can put the work behind it, you know, you have the right people around you, there should be nothing to ever get in the way, anything. Yeah, man. So there's, there's two things I want to highlight. The first one is, and this is like the epitome of, I feel like most of our conversations is do not do, do not become the person who gets to the end of the day, the end of the week, the month, the year, or your life and have to look yourself in the face and say, I wish I would have. Yeah. Oh, that God. is 
probably the number one regret of people getting into their older age is they wish they would have taken more chances. They wish they would have pursued their dreams more. They wish they would have experienced more. Do not allow the woulda, shoulda, coulda disease to infect you. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is, and I think this is really important too, if, and I'll, I'll bring it full circle, but what something you said remind me of is if you want people to add value to you, you need to add value to people, whether it's your best friend or someone walking in off the street. So to bring it full circle. So what you said that reminded me of this was I barely knew Yafe. I was working at a gym that he worked out at once in a while. And he came in and like, we, we were talking, I think we were talking about Tom Brady probably and like probably. His, and his workouts <laughs> And you mentioned something about like, yeah, I'm looking to get signed by a team in the next year. And I just looked him straight in the face. I'm like, dude, you got it. Like you already work hard. You know, you're going to get it. Like now it's just time and effort. And then I would talk about goals I had and he would look me dead in the face and say, dude, you got this. Like anything you need, I'm here. That is so crucial. If I, I guess I do believe in karma when it comes to that. Like if you want those people in your community pouring value into you, you bet your biscuits you need to be the type of person who's going out and pumping value and belief into other people. No, totally agree, man. I, and like I said, we, because I, when we first sat down, like, you know, you feel, you feel the passion. You feel, you, you'll know when somebody's like, you know, just nonchalant about it. But then when, you know, when one, somebody's looking you in the eye and two, and you feel that passion, it's like, oh, dude, this, this, this man's for real. You know, kind of, kind of like in business where like, um, you know, uh, I remember I heard something over the weekend where Mark Cuban, when he first bought the uh, the Dallas Mavericks, dude made a phone call to every single ticket holder to bring them back. So like he's like, I wanted them to know like, hey, I'm the owner and I care about you wanting to come and see a good performance. You know what I'm saying? It's it's that wants, dude. And, and and going back even a little bit, even though I signed a contract, dude, it's really just the beginning. That's you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's kind of like. Um, you know, you those horse races where you, you know, or those, uh, those groundhogs, those, uh, those, those greyhound dogs where, you know, they're chasing around, you know, that thing that's in front of them to finish the finish line. That's what I'm chasing now. You know, now, you know, the preparation's there, like, okay, the recognition's there. Now it's like, okay, all right, now I have goals for myself. My goal, honestly, and I've said it out, I've said it out, you know, verbally, and I'll say it too. My goal is to go there and be the defensive rookie of the year, period. Dude, yes. And so, like, you just hit such a, critical point dude this i love talking with you because i feel like you just hit all of these things that i'm i've been thinking about in the recent past but this is something that's so important and this is why i continue to do like so many people ask me if i'm masochistic because of some of the like stuff that i do for in my opinion like my own training and for fun quite honestly but like with bro you do like you have fun meanwhile people check out my videos they're like man that looks hard it's like no, I don't enjoy squatting, yeah. you know, <laughs> X amount of pounds. I do it because it's what it has to get done, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but exactly. So there are a lot of people who they, they work and work and work and work until they hit this level or they get that thing. And then they hit that and they, they just sit back because they're like, all right, that was the goal. We accomplished it. Now we're good you always have to be in pursuit of something. I think that is the most dangerous position to be in is after you hit a big accomplishment to just sit back and like relax. Now, celebrating, I'm all for. Rewarding yourself, I'm all for. Trust me, there there have been bigger races or bigger challenges where I take a day or two after and just lay around watch some movies by all means but right what i'm what i'm referring to is let's say someone's in your position and they get this contract and as soon as it's signed they just sit back like all right that was it now i'm good that is such a dangerous thing to do and i think the essence of life comes from the pursuit of what's next whether it's the next goal the next hobby what you're going to be doing the next day, there needs to be some ambition in that pursuit. I agree because if you don't, if you don't wake up with the goal, as soon as you know, I mean, I don't know how people wake up. As soon as that, you know, I wake up, say my prayers. But as soon as you wake up and get going, say, like, "Hey, yo, what, what, what can I do to make myself one percent better?" Like I said before, because, um, you know, even right after I signed my contract, I worked out the next day. <laughs> I was with my trainer the next day because 
because now because now it's time to put it's time to push it's time it's time to push the you know the your your cards to the middle trying to push the chips to the, to the middle you know what i mean because now it's like okay all right you got what you wanted now okay like i said i'm doing this to be the best i'm not doing it to be mediocre you're not you're not you're not putting in the work to be mediocre you're not trying to be you know top 10 top 5 you're trying to shoot for number 1 period my goal is to go there go to training camp you know i leave this Saturday, go there, pass physical, obviously, and play lights out. Be 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 one of the smartest. You know, everybody's like I said on this level now. Everybody's talented, so now it's the little things, the film, you know, the understanding of the defense, understanding of the offense, um, the doing things that separate you. Because my goal is to play one year of arena and go ship to Canada for the next five years. You know what I mean? And I, that's 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 it. That that's you know I just put it out there that the goal is to play one season in arena, be defensive rookie of the year and go and play five years in Canada. If they, if they, if they let Americans in, I, I can't control, I can't control that. If they let Americans in, that's the goal. Well, I will say you're one for one after your first appearance on here. So you have good luck when you, when you call <laughs> shots on this, on this podcast, but yeah, man. So like what you're talking about reminds me of a quote that I absolutely love. It's by, I believe John C. Maxwell. And he talks about, God's gift to you is instilling you with all the potential you have in life and your uh, obligation pretty much back to him is fulfilling that potential. And again, you can fill in God with the universe, karma, you know, Gaia, whatever you want to fill right. it in with. But I truly believe that. I believe that it is, in a sense, is our obligation to fulfill the potential that we have been put here with. And I almost think now for people who don't believe in God, the universe, some higher power, you're probably not going to take this as seriously. But if you do believe in that, I think that's almost like a kick to the nuts for God. If you come down here and waste all the amazing gifts that you've been given. Yeah, you look at, you know, it, it, I, guess how you, I go back to the sport of football, you can go, to, you know, to basketball a little bit that, you know, guys have super, they're, they're, they're extremely talented, you know, you know, I've never seen, he's the best player since Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, this, this, and that. And again, in their eyes, they made it, they made it, you know, they, they, they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish, but they don't have in the back of their mind, like, okay, I want to win championships. I want to be first team all NBA. I want to be first team all pro. I want to be a pro bowler. I want to be an all-star. They don't have that, you know, not saying, you know, they don't have that. I'm not saying they don't have the ability. They have the ability, but I don't think they necessarily have the mental states of saying, all right, you know, I'm here. I'm playing with the best in the world. I'm playing with the best in the United States. You know, this is what I got to do to separate myself. Because now, again, like I said, everybody's talented. It's, it's, it's so, it's, okay, all right, film, weights, recovery. Again, you have a 43-year-old who just won the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have a 43 year old who just won a Super Bowl. You think he did it because he's he's physically gifted? No, he's 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 gifted, but it's like it's his preparation. He talks about it all the time. I prepare myself to be better than I was the year before. I prepare myself to win a Super Bowl. I prepare, you know what I'm saying? So he already has the intestinal fortitude. He has the mental mindset. So it's like, all right, have people gather around him to have the same beliefs. Once they have the same beliefs, then the only thing they have to do is follow the path. Follow the path. Yeah. And you you bring up a good point. So this is something that we talk about in Ninja Warrior all the time is on, on any given obstacle, before you actually start the obstacle, analyze it, visualize it. Where are your hands going to be placed? How are you going to twist and move? Where are you going to shift your momentum? But the second you start that obstacle, you just go. Like you don't, you don't think about it. You don't analyze it while you're there. You just let your body work. And I think that's what Tom Brady does on such a high level is he, he studies the defense of the other team. He studies their patterns. He looks at their tendencies. He thinks about if this is going to happen, how do I react? But when he's in the situation, he just lets instinct take over because no matter how fast you can analyze something, instinct is going to be faster. Right. So that I, I just think that's so important with, with everything you do. And uh, again, we're both athletes. So we always bring it back to athletics, but 
hopefully anyone listening understands that these, these aspects of what we're talking about are life lessons. And I think that's what's so profound about athletics is the things that you learn in doing it are things you can apply to any area of your life. And the crazy thing about it is too, like a lot of athletes go straight into business right afterwards because it's a competitive thing. It's something that they, that, you know, gets them going. Um, you know, uh, you, you look at rather athletes get into wine or if they get into, um, you know, making their own brand even more successful or what it is, you know what I'm saying? It's those things that they have to do that, that, that keeps pushing them and giving them that not necessarily a replacement, but a substitution to how it was in their playing days where they can push the mold, where they can put their face on it, where they can, okay, all right, well, you know what? Um, I have my own book that came out. So I want people to understand, like, you know, a lot of the answers are getting put out there. You know, it's a matter of rather if it's picking up a book, rather if it's, you know, listening to a podcast. Like I said, dude, I, I, I watched some of the people that you interviewed and, and it's absolutely amazing. I'm sure I was like, we talked about this. You gave me your business card and you're busting your butt, dude. And like I said, I tell you all the time, I'm like, hey, man, keep up, keep it up. I tell you all the time, hey, yo, keep it up, you know? Or I'll be like, hey, yo, I, dude, that's a dope podcast. That person, I learned, learned something here. You know what I mean? Like you're, push, you're pushing the mold, you know? And you're always going to have people that say, oh, well, are you sure? You're always going to have people like, okay, um, I don't think you should. No. As long as you have a chance, as long as the, the, the future is unknown, you have a chance. You know, a lot of people just throw in the towel so, so fast these days. A lot of people just choose to just, you know, just give up on life because of the pandemic. And a lot of people just choose to just not want to, you know, say, hey, you know what, let's give it a go, you know. Yeah, man. And I think, so this is like with what you're talking about. First of all, thank you, by the way, for all those compliments. That was awesome. And I really am blessed to have the caliber of people I've had on this podcast because I mean I've gotten people like off camera the anywhere from two to 30 minute conversations afterwards or beforehand are priceless so that's just amazing and it goes back to what we were talking about yes I practice what I preach I surround myself with the people who are going to level me up and so this is a big part of that but getting into um, like what you were talking about I think it is so important for people to understand this pattern. So obviously I'm a fitness coach among other things, but in fitness, what is, what is the new year's known for? It's known for people coming up with their resolutions, crushing it at the gym for three weeks. And then all of a sudden they realize that it's going to take a long time and it's going to take commitment. And so they fall off. That's just, that's just how it's known. Everybody wants that quick fix, man. Exactly. And I would argue that is the same with a lot of things. If people start a new business and they, they have that exciting honeymoon phase where it's all new and exciting, but then all of a sudden they realize, oh crap, I'm not going to be a millionaire in three months after I start or six <laughs> months after I start. Or you, you hear about it in relationships, the honeymoon phase. And then all of a sudden that fades away and you realize, oh crap, this actually might take a little work and compromise. Right. And this is something that, and I, I said it, I'm going to say this like five times before I get to the point. This is so important is recognizing that natural pattern of human behavior. You need to know that there's going to come that point where the honeymoon phase is going to be over, regardless of what you're doing, regardless of what you're pursuing, regardless of who you're becoming, the honeymoon phase is going to be over at some point. And then that's when you need to decide okay, is this really something that I am genuinely passionate about pursuing or becoming? And if so, you need to start sacrificing. Like you need to start figuring out what you need to do to overcome just dropping it now that it's not new and exciting. Right. And you know, it's just to add on top of that too, not even just, to, just, that, not even just that drive, but the fact of like, okay, going and researching, you know, other business owners, how they got started. Okay what mistakes that they make so you can avoid that. You know what I mean? So that's what keeps, what, you know, what correlates through sports and business. It's like, okay, how Michael Jordan did make, didn't make the playoffs for his first few years of the league. You know what I'm saying? So what did he have to do? So, all right, I got I to get bigger, stronger, faster. 
you know what I'm saying? Business-wise, like, oh man, you know, I probably shouldn't have bought that property. Look at the neighborhood, socioeconomic status is not really behind it, you know? So let me try this, let me try that. So I agree with you, man. It's, it's, it, it's life's a chess game, man. And it's a matter of making the right moves. But I, I will say at the end of the day, it is a game. So I've been uh, like sitting here, I've realized I've been very intense in this podcast. It's because I'm very passionate about the topics we've been covering. But at the end of the day, like it's a game. And so you need to have fun with it. The only right. reason that I'm so heated up is because this is stuff that I coach people on all the time and doesn't stick very often. That's why <laughs> I get very passionate about it because oh, I have a lot of people come to me and ask why they can't stick to a workout program, why they can't consistently eat healthy, why they keep doing these things they shouldn't be doing. And everything that we've said up until this point that's your answer. And so like, once you can figure out that stuff, then it gets really fun because then you can experiment, then you can get creative, then you can do these things that are like risky, or it's like you're taking a chance or you're, you're taking that leap of faith, or you're doing something that's out of your comfort zone, but it goes from causing anxiety to causing excitement. Right. Totally agree, man. Totally agree. It and especially on top of that, when you when when you're seeing the results too, it's like, you know, hey, I want to see more results. When you're seeing the money, it's like, okay, how can I make more money? Okay, contracts coming in. Okay, how can I get another one? And a lot of athletes, it's funny. A lot of athletes are saying like, you know, it's not the rookie contract you're just, you're trying to get that second contract. You're trying to get that third contract. That's where the money comes in. That yeah, the endorsements are nice, but you know, when you get that check from the NFL, and it's, you know. Four year look at that. Dak Prescott just signed uh, a four year deal, $160 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and he was grinding it out, grinding it out, just got an ankle injury. He's coming back, but grinding it out. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's really nice to see people win. The, the ones that, you know, the underdog, the ones that necessarily never thought that you could make it, never thought that um, things would be successful in a business for you, you know, and, and then it's always not going to lie. It's, it's nice to rub it in some people's faces, but you know, it's really about proving yourself right more than anybody. Yeah. I, um, it's interesting you brought that up because I was actually thinking about asking you that, but this is, this is my most updated perspective on this. Cause I've had many different ones throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Um, if you would have asked high school, Trevor, what his thoughts on this are, I cared more about proving other people wrong than I cared about proving myself. Right. Like if anyone told me I sucked at something or I was never going to amount to anything or anything like that, which I was not a great student. So it was pretty valid at the time, but <laughs> um, it was one of those things where I only went out and did things out of spite. It was not any type of like fulfillment in myself. It was just spite. Now, over the years, I've come to realize a lot of people project their self-doubt in what they tell you, you can or cannot do. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I have, I have to put into perspective and understand who's saying it because it's if it's someone it can be cancerous, dude, that could be cancerous. So to speak, quote unquote, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So it's, you need to understand who's saying it because if it's someone who you respect and who's coming from a place of authority in what they're telling you, then yeah, you got to take it and really kind of implement what they're telling you but for the most part if it's a friend or a family member or someone who is trying to come from a loving place don't get me wrong but doesn't have the the background needed to really give their educated two cents on the matter you need to come from a place of empathy and understand that at that point they have a set of limitations that regardless of the context they're going to project onto whoever they're giving their advice to and you need to take all of that into consideration when letting these external factors affect you or not. And so when it comes to like doing things to prove people wrong, I can't deny that it does feel pretty good if someone calls you out and says you can't do something and you go out and do it. But I'm no longer the type of person who would turn around and be like, oh, yeah, take that, dude. Like I told right. you. It's like, no, just show them with your actions. Yeah. And the thing. And the thing about it's like um, when you do it, it's kind of like, you know, you have that person or those people in the back of their mind. It's like, 
I know what they're thinking right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, man. I, and that that's exactly it. Like you, you can prove them wrong, but just do it with your actions. Like you don't mm-hmm. have to do it out of spite. You don't have to make them feel bad or shameful in any way. I mean, they probably will once they see how wrong they were. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't think it's worth it to spend your time and energy giving the old, I told you so to somebody who, you know, is already wrong. You don't need to kick the horse while it's down or whatever the phrase is. Um, right. And the, the, I, see, I always just telling you, I told you, cause like, Hey, like, Hey, I'm tell, I, I told you this is going to happen. You know what I mean? Not, not to rub in your face, but like, like, Hey man, it took a while, but I told you I was going to sign with someone. <laughs> well, I, I like your approach. So you, you call your shot once, then you, you, basically shut up, you put your work in. And then once you have the result, then you're like, boom, told you it was going to happen. And I think that's the difference between confidence and cockiness. I think if you're confident, you call your shot once you say it with complete conviction, and then you shut up, you put your head down, you work your tail off. And then you, once you hit that result, then you can pick your head back up, take a look at the view and turn around and be like, boom. Exactly. But I think <laughs> cockiness almost stems from insecurity where that's where you're constantly just saying like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm amazing. I'm great. I'm the best. I'm so cool. And then at the end of the day, you're not actually doing anything because you're getting such a dopamine rush from the excitement of saying how cool you are, that mm-hmm. you're not doing anything to actually earn it. No, I totally agree. Uh, it, 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 it does like fill the void in a way. Uh, I like how you said that because, you know, some people are, are insecure uh, through other ways, but um, when it comes to, you know, bragging, like I, I think bragging is, uh, is, is you know, uh, something that you could put alongside of being cocky because it's just like, hey, you know, how you said it, all you gotta do is say it once. You say it once and you let that marinate and once it's done, it's kind of like, okay, that's another thing checked off the list. What's next? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm essentially on a mission. Like you said, I, I have things mentally in my head that's like, okay, that's checked off. All right. So this is what's next. All right. What do I have to do? All right. This is what has to get done. All right. I'm going to shoot my shot. All right, let's go. You know what I mean? Having that, having that mentality of just even pressing forward and pressing forward, you know, because like we just said, a lot of people get complacent. And I think complacency is a slow process to laziness. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think they go hand in hand. I think like, I don't know why this made me think of it, but when you said that, it made me think of like a Twizzler, like they're just intertwined. Like it's (laughs) one, it's one single thing. Um, But, and this is something like, I want to say to like, there, there is a fine line. So when I think of bragging, I think there's a fine line between, cause I'm the type of person, like when I do something I think is cool and like badass, I'm really excited and I will right. go tell my friends about it. And that's, I will that like passion behind it. Cause again, that, that, that voice, here's the thing. Cause like I said before, the tone, the, the, the directness, the, the, the body language and just, you know, how you're attacking it. Like, dude, that's that man's passionate. You know what I'm saying? As me to, hey, look what I just did. Boom, check it out. Duh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's definitely. Not, it's like, dude, like, why is he talking? Like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah, and like, I I think though, it if you if you have the wherewithal to understand your tone behind it, then there's a pretty good divider. But if you don't, I think there there comes a fine line between like. And I've done it probably before. My friends will probably attest that when I when I check these boxes and I do these things and go on these adventures, I've gotten super amped up. And there have probably been like three day periods where I just don't shut up about it. And I could definitely see how that's perceived as bragging. So I think, and I'm curious what your opinion is on this. I'm curious as to if let's say again, I go out and I do some crazy thing and I go to a group of friends and I'm talking about it. Cause I I'm just genuinely excited about the fact that I did it. 
and they come back with like, oh yeah, you're always like talking about that stuff. Do you think there's a correlation between negative feedback to that and people who are just insecure that they're not doing anything themselves? Yeah, I think that's a, you ever heard the, the, the term FOMO, fear of missing out? Oh yeah. I think that's something that corresponds with it. They, they feel like those, though they, they, they missed out on something and since they're not a part of it, they're going to brush it off or sweep it underneath the rug because one, they didn't think of the, uh, they didn't think of the idea or they could have thought of the idea, but chose not to go that route because, you know, they felt like there was something else was more important. Um, you know, I, I run into, you know, people all the time that I used to go to high school with. It's like, oh, dude, you're still playing? Like, you know, grow up, like, you know, things like that. But that comes from, you know, two things. One, it's because they didn't do it in, in that particular sport or that they didn't do it in the particular thing that they wanted to do in life. So it's like, they're going to shoot it down, but they're going to shoot it down in a somewhat decency voice in a nice way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, because they don't want to come over as a hater, but they also don't want to hear you. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I just use that as, as fuel. I really do, man. Like I, I really just want to, show that all the work that was put in all the people that supported me i want not just to make myself proud make them proud because you know they're investing in time too you know they're not always physically there you know but they're you know they're for more support they're there to do everything they can to make things easier on you you know and and that's where like i said before that 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 good group that internal uh, social group that's what's going to keep things uh keep the good good but also be honest with you, but are also going to keep the, the negative people away from you. And, and, and that's where, so it's like, you kind of feel bad for those people who are shooting it down. Cause it's like, Hey, you know, I wish that you had that social group where you had those people that's like, Hey, that's actually want to encourage you and you know, critique you in a, in, in a, in a, in a nice straightforward way and not in a disrespectful way. Yeah. One. Well, so I will say like, I was asking out of curiosity, I'm very blessed with the people that are in my life with, I have a group of friends who I train with and they, I mean, we push each other hard in terms of training as if anyone follows my social media or knows people I train with, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man, you, um, you, you do some crazy things, but I'm saying, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just not about it. Not about <laughs> it. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, I, I think it's safe to say, uh, I'm not much of a football build and you're not much of an ultra endurance build. <laughs> right. I, th I think we're pretty good in our own lanes with that, but <laughs> yeah, man, I think, and like what you're talking about too, I think a big part of why I get so excited about these accomplishments. Yeah. It is selfish. I'll say that all day. I put in the work. I feel awesome about it, but there's also the aspect of for all those people who believed in me, for all those people who helped me, gave me advice, cheered me on, we're just there. That's an adage to them. Like at the end of a book right. where like the author thanks to all the people, yep. like every time I do one of these accomplishments, my passion is that acknowledgement of like gratitude for all the people who have helped me along whatever journey it was to whatever I was building or doing. And so I think that's so important to set, set the example, knowing that it's not just you it's you're representing the people in your life, in your community, in your friend group, because that's, that's who you're around. That's who you're associated with. And so you need to be able to represent those people as the best, best person you can be. And yeah, just to add on to that too, right? You're talking about earlier, like, you know, people give up, you know, three weeks into, you know, working on things like that. And that's where they have to tap into, you know, their psyche. Like, Hey, this is not just for me. This is for, you know, for people who have kids, it's for, me to go chase my kids, me to go travel to their baseball games, me to go, you know, be a better husband and, you know, things like that. They have to think about not just them. I think when you think about it, that, it's not just about you, things will get more things will get accomplished and you'll, you know, be less likely to even want to even think about quitting. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. So talking about this four by four by 48, this is so just for anyone who actually like runs a decent amount, a four mile run is not that bad. 
And if you're doing it every four hours, let's say you're running like an eight minute per mile pace or even like a nine minute per mile pace, you still have three and a half hours, give or take to rest, recover and get ready for the next run. Right. So the running in and of itself is not that bad. It's the fact that when you, when you get done with the run at two 30 in the morning and you know, you have to get back up at five 30, but your body's in that like active state. So you can't fall asleep. And then you're, you're tired. You're a little sore from the run before. And now you know that you have to get up and go do that again. It's that mental part that starts to kind of wear and tear. And so I think I truly believe, and I'm sure there are people who could go out and run this race for themselves by themselves and be fine. But for me, I know that the reason I was able to get through it is a, I had really good friends who ran like certain like four mile runs with me. Mm -hmm. And they were just like talking with me and keeping me company and cheering me on. And also when I was running through these runs, I have an accountability partner and we both decided that this year, the the motto is this is the year of more, more cool experiences, more finances, better careers, like just more life, more fulfillment. And every run I did, especially the ones that were at 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. on an hour or two of sleep. Those were the runs I was just repeating the year of more, the year of more, like you got it. You got to prove that you want more. And when you put it, like you said, when you put it outside of yourself and even if they're not physically there, like you bring these other people in and allow them to lift you up, it's going to let you carry yourself more like further, faster, higher. And it's just an overall better experience. Yeah, man. Like it, it... And then, like I said, when that all gets accomplished, you know, when, when the, the end goal gets accomplished, you think about, you know, those people, the smiling faces, and it's like, okay, it wasn't just for me, it was everybody. And it, just because, you know, even in, even like MMA, they're like, you know, they're like, you know, even though I'm the one in there, but I'm fighting for, you know, my strength and conditioning coach, my wrestling coach, my jujitsu coach, my this, my that, you know, and that's, that's what happens. You know, the end result is, you know, you get the W and then they're all coming into the octagon, taking a picture, you know what I'm saying? Like that's just like, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah, man. Could not agree more. All right. So we will get into the final two. I know I've asked this before, but for people who now realize that you know how to get things done, where can people connect with you if they're curious about taking it to the next level, how to keep pushing when you don't see the tangible results yet? Any questions people have, where can they connect with you? Uh, you connect with me on uh, Instagram uh, at Yafe underscore Harvey. Uh, Facebook, I answer my Facebook here and there too, but uh, Instagram most definitely. And then Twitter too, uh, at Yafe underscore Harvey. Uh, answer anytime. And like you said, I have no problem giving you out advice. And that will be in the show notes, just like last time. But also, <laughs> like I really do recommend going and watching the last video with him as well. These have been two amazing conversations. And to finish it off, we will get into the final two. So question number one, I'm very curious to see if these are the same or different answers. What right now for you is the next step in you becoming your best self? Uh, Right now, at least it's about making sure that I push the limits even more, more than I even thought it could be. Uh, You say, because the work has been put, the work has been put in, but now it's a matter of, okay, you're going to a different environment now, right? I'm going to Wyoming. I've never been to Wyoming before. So now it's a matter of, okay, going to a different environment, still being me, but being, being a leader, you know, setting the tone, uh, winning a starting job, you know, and then creating, creating a winning culture there. You create, you know, if I do all that, everything else is going to fall into place. You know, the the defensive rookie of the year is going to fall into place. The going to, you know, Canada is going to fall into place. I do those four things right. Everything else is going to take care of itself. Heck yeah, man. Four piece puzzle. Can't be too difficult. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But no, I, I think that's awesome. And I think you have it in the bag, man. Like just with the conviction you have with the articulation you have in describing how to be a leader, how to perform at the top level, how to be a good teammate to do all these things. I don't think you'll have any issue, you know, commanding respect and you'll do it. I think with your actions more than your words, but I'm excited to see what you do. But yeah, man, me too. I'm extremely excited, man. It, like I said, I've never been to, never been to the Dakotas, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming area, but you know, I'm excited. And like I said, after, after talking to the coach, um, man, it's, 
it's going to be it's going to be really really cool you're an active person you'll like it out there there's a lot of hiking to do <laughs> i don't dude, I, don't, I don't even know how to pack i hate i hate not even saying this right now live on your podcast i don't even know how to pack for wyoming <laughs> well if you're packing for a hike a lot of snacks a lot of water you should be good <laughs> <laughs> no but I, i'm excited for you man and depending how long you're out there i'll probably end up come visiting you just because i love getting out there and checking out the national parks and stuff but getting into the last question this one i'm very curious to hear what you say and to see if it's the same one as last time because i can't remember what you said last time but you get the chance yet again to challenge the audience to do one thing one thing that will move them towards a better version of who they are in one aspect or another what are you going to challenge the listeners to do? Uh, I would challenge them to actually think about the people who got them to this point, to where they are, right? And then once you, once you think about those people and you accomplish what you need to accomplish, then it's about challenging not even just yourself, but challenging them to even be even better supporters. I love that one. That's, I love that one. That's a really good one. And I think it's, it does such a good job of, not just thinking about yourself, but actually thinking about other people as well. So, man, I, I dig that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So thank you, Yafe, for coming on yet again. Man, thank you for having me again, man. I really appreciate it. I was stoked and I was like, hey, we got to do one more, man. Absolutely. <laughs> and like, so I want to thank you for coming on a second time. But for people who have gotten to this point, like, I just want you to actually take this away. He came on the podcast the first time. He already was on my radar as a high performer, high achiever, big thinker. And on the podcast, he called his shot and said, the next time I'm on here, I will have a signed deal with one of these two teams and I'll be on my way to go play ball. Sure enough, he, he contacted me a few weeks ago. He let me know that it was coming down to the wire. It was getting into the final components of getting the deal signed. And sure enough, it is signed. He is back on here. And these are the type of people I want to put in front of you. These are the type of people I want you to see, because I think Yafe, you'll agree. Like you're not some superhuman, like anomaly. Like you are, you are a human being. <laughs> you just, you've, you've put in the work and understand how to develop the mindset, how to develop the work ethic, how to take action, not make excuses. And develop that supporting cast. And so th this is what I want people to see is the example of, you said you were going to do it, you put the work in and it's here. And I'm hoping I'll have a lot more of these stories coming down the pipeline of people. I'm I can sure bring you will, back. man. You have a huge diverse of people, man. And it's like, rather it's business, real estate. Remember you had another female athlete on. It's just like, yo, this fan is doing big things, man. Seriously. Like I said, I got, a, I got a lot of gratitude for the people that I've been really blessed to have on here. But yeah, so for anyone, again, who's gotten to this point, please take this away because this is the conviction you need. Call your shot, put in the work and make it happen. So Yafe, thank you for setting that example. For everybody listening, thank you as always for tuning in. I respect everyone who is trying to develop themselves in one way or always. Um, if you have comments, questions, words of wisdom, agreements or disagreements, feel free to comment or send us a private message if you really want to get into it privately. And if you have someone in your life who just needs this inspiration, because this was a very passionate, inspirational conversation. And this is probably the most fired up I've ever been on the show, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Um, if you know anyone who needs that extra push or just needs a little piece of whatever advice we gave in this, share it with them. That's why there's a share button. It is not just there to add to the aesthetics. There is a purpose for it. So please, please, please use it. So thank you again for tuning in everybody. And until next time, keep trying to become your best self.